But do you want to stand on the end? <laughs> okay, well, I am going to start with uh, our first film, A Goldfish Contemplates Life. Uh, now, was this, <laughs> was this done during the pandemic when you, uh, you know, there was limited filming opportunities and you said, okay, there's a goldfish tank here, let's just, you know, let's see what we can do with this. How did, what would inspire you? Uh, so yes, actually, this was filmed during the pandemic. This uh, I was an actor by trade to start with, and uh, when everything went into lockdown and we weren't had the opportunity to really be in front of the camera anymore, and uh, definitely feeling that isolation and stuff, I wanted to see what it was like to make a film, and um, I went through several several scripts, and I touched on uh, Jason's script, which really highlighted made me feel the isolation in which I was having there and the goldfish really was all of us that were trapped inside and the fly really felt like all of the people who were on the front line workers and the who were out there in our supermarkets and our and our healthcare workers that would rather have been at home and that grass is greener between the two that we were all feeling at the time I saw it right there on the page and I, I wanted to bring that to life and express that and because it was animals I could didn't have to worry about bringing in uh, actors and, and COVID compliant and that sort of stuff before there was such a thing. Now, how many hours of <laughs> goldfish <laughs> swimming around? You, you know, the, the editing. You know, was it a similar process because it was? You know, do you reuse the same footage or? I mean, how how did that go? Surprisingly, I expected it to be a lot more mutual, Omaha, very National Geographic, where there was going to be hours and hours and hours of sitting there waiting for the, the perfect shot. But one of the things that was remarkable about Goldfish um, was his actual, he was controllable to some extent from behind the camera. Um, when I wanted him to go up, I'd go like this, and he'd go, and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is happening. Um, I said, I'd be like, go like this over here, and he'd be like, oh, what's that over there? Wow. And so uh, to that extent he was. But making, I had no expectation when I went into it to have any of the, the mouth line up. I didn't want to, didn't have the money and pay for CGI and stuff there to do some sort of talking or whatnot. But I was absolutely blown away with my editor Aaron's ability to overlay the previously recorded sounds and from the, the script and stuff. And I was like, I was like, oh my goodness, look! And I have received so many letters and stuff and people asking, so who did the animation on the mouth and stuff? Wow. All Aaron, Aaron's editing. Well, it's funny because we called it an animated film. Yeah. Yeah. We were like going back and forth. Unless it was an animated film. Yeah, no, to 100% live action. So the, the, the short answer to your question is, after it took nine months to make the film, and but that was almost all pre-production and storyboarding and trying to get the shots and everything else like that. And so we actually were able to film it in a single 10-hour day. That's great. <laughs> was it always a goldfish, or did you contemplate other animals? In it? it was a goldfish, um, and, and technically, that wasn't a goldfish. Um, so we actually, there was some uh, thought that went into that. Um, it gets a little dark here. Um, so I was actually partial to like an Orando or it's one of the other fancier goldfishes to match his personality. Um, but we definitely went with that particular actor because in the, un in the uh, event that he decided not to show up to work one day, it would be relatively easy to replace because he wore the uniform color. Luckily, um, we only needed the one. Okay, that's good. Uh, actually, uh, he's in England, but you can reach out to me here, and I can put you in touch. <laughs> there you have it. I, I want to know about Fly. How did you get the Fly Act? Tell us about your Fly Act. I mean, so, uh, they can be kind of sketchy. They just, you know, get you one minute, go on the next. So Fly, um, the original plan, and we actually went through with this plan, uh, I found that you could buy fly larvae, which uh, at, on, online, in groups of like 25 to 100. And so I had a room in my house in which I had individual hatching process, 
hundreds of them um, around to hatch fly. And Are you allowed this? How did you feel about this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. And for the most part, the experiment was unsuccessful. Nobody had, <laughs> only had a handful of flies actually um, to be hatched, and it was going to be. I was going to build a state sound stage, a little, little tiny one, and complex glass and a movable floor that would have like sugar water and stuff on it to be able to. <laughs> and so, in the end, there had my fly was actually used in some of the shots. But thankfully for my so, uh, creative director and everything, is have a plan B. And so, sourcing all over the world, got about another hundred different flies of different sizes and, and realism. Um, to be able to swap those in and out. And so fly was actually uh, one of the more challenging aspects of that shoot. You couldn't just put a rotten banana on the window so <laughs> that the house and fly comes? It was shot in the winter. Uh, yeah. I have another question for you. I, mean, I spoke to you earlier, and I'm a former educator. Um, so you ever think about putting this in the children's book? I would love to see this. I'm a little concerned uh, and question Every time I watch it, some of the, the, the biggest laughs I got from you guys were on the tapping of asses. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the number of times in which we reference who, um, which of course you know. Yeah, kids love that. Uh, I know, mean, no, but moms aren't always that happy, or fathers for that matter, um, with their kids there, everything being a, a fart joke. Um, but uh, no, I, I definitely have sourced it out and checked, and this is this is played uh, with all the way down from four year olds. But it, the really seven to eight is the is the target mm. area in which to enjoy it um, in the children's section. Yeah, I think it would be a very good piece for children of that age. Yeah, I, I would love to see this go into something like that to find a really good illustrator that might want to make it into a book. I uh, would definitely have to renegotiate some of the contracts there uh, to make that happen, but it's uh, definitely open, yes. Um, we're also at discussion and, and authorization, written authorization has been given for uh, a, a, another installment following Fly's life. What ha how did he get there, or maybe what happened after he left? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm going to move on to Philip. Oh. A farewell to Arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was uh, done in 2010. Yeah, that was done a while ago when my my brother's son was uh, younger. Then. Right. He's old. He's in the other movie truck. He's bigger now. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, Philip is a, a three-peater. This is you he submitted our, our first Thank festival you. and yes. last year. <laughs> There's humor, there's sci-fi, um, and you, you use a lot of literary references uh, in your right. film. So what inspired this one? Well, my brother, uh, he was having arm wrestling contests with his son when he was little, and he was always beating him. And then finally, he got old enough to beat the father. Mm -hmm. you know? and so we just made a movie about it. And we, he wanted to you know, make it exaggerate everything. So you know, I, we got a fake arm, so it's all the rest. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's, that was his idea. I mean, he comes up with the ideas, I shoot it and I edit it. So, okay. you know, that's and you guys basically just come up with ideas and do well, it. He, he told me, I asked him today, he's not going to be here, I said, how do you, where do you get your ideas from? He said, I don't know, I just have, either have these dreams and stuff and I just wake up and I have the idea. Yeah. Usually yeah. he comes up with a title first and then he works backwards that way. Hmm. You know, okay. I, I, you know, that's, I, everybody has their own creative process. Right. There's a Snyder film has definitely become a thing. Yes. That is, yes. We, we yeah. see that come in. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, the next one, you'll see this. The son in this is also, he's in the other movie truck. So he's right. much yes. bigger now. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually, I think he's almost 30. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's another thing that, you, you know, all of your films use the whole family. So uh, that's, you yeah. Yeah, he, he's an act. He, he just did a commercial. I'm not sure. It was for some uh, internet thing. I don't even know what it is. He was in uh, some movies. He was in Wolf of Wall Street and, uh, mm. you know, his background and stuff. So he, he works all the time. That's great. Well, well so glad that you're back with us. And he has yeah. another film later on in the day. So. Right. Truck. 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 <laughs> Truck. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Sean? How are you doing? Uh, was this your first film? Or uh, what's your background? Well, 
well. I shot my uh, comedy. I did two other films. I also did music videos. So I shot a comedy, and I thought to myself, I want to do something a little more serious. So I just wanted to challenge myself to where I can just get the crowd to be very suspenseful and really be into you know, what's going on. What, um, did you write this as well? Yeah, I read it. And, and was it? it and uh, yeah, um, it was very topical, certainly. Um, it, you know, you saw, you know, different sides of everything. What, um, what motivated you to do, pick this topic? Well, growing up in like an urban environment, it was all different types of aspects of where people grow up, grow up where they're from. And I was fortunate enough, you know, I graduated from Brooklyn College for film, but you know, as you're growing up grew up in these rough environments, so like I had both sides. And I also have a lot of friends from different backgrounds. So I said, you know, what if I just challenged myself to just shoot a film with the reversal of something you wouldn't expect, but to get that the aspect of, you know, you might think officer is the wrong, doing the wrong thing, but really they're trying to protect you. But sometimes they're trying to overprotect you because they're trying to protect you. But really, there was somebody doing something wrong the whole time. So we're just trying to get everybody's perspective, wow. knowing that there's really, not saying someone is wrong, but they're all different angles where you should just look at everybody's perspective and not just say this person is wrong. And that really came across, and to be able to have done that in a short film was very, very well done. Very well done. Thank you. You were outside. Yeah, it was hard. First, I had to go to, to the police department. Okay. I had to ask a friend of mine, uh, well, my professor, written me a letter, but you know, sometimes, you know, they might think, and I'm not really being truthful about the situation. We wouldn't want to go out and shoot something like that. So I had it, you know, written out with the schools, you know, stamp of approval on the paper. Right. I just let them know and gave them the okay. And we also had signs also, like in the background where we were shooting, like, you know, this is real. We're shooting something right now. There's a student film going on. So okay. everybody respect what was going on. It's just, I know filmmakers know when you shoot something outdoors, everybody like the crowd around and start yeah. watching what's happening. Right. But besides that, it was, it was pretty good. Did they have an officer present or? Oh, no, 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 we just had to just let them know because it's, it's about three blocks away from the police station. And okay. I have like a relationship with the community because I work in the, in the school as well. So they see me out there. So like, you know, I'm doing something. I gave them the heads up twice. Right. So before yeah. I got out there, I gave them more. To, to continue on that topic, what kind of um, safety conditions do you have if you have to hire a special crew because you were using that? So I was lucky enough to I hire well, my girlfriend came here to support me. She was here as well. She had the props, so it was like, we wanted to, when we shot something, we wanted to just bring the props out right away okay. and do it quick as possible in an alley, in a closed up area, and let everybody know that's there. We're shooting this, and it's not going to be long. And also, like I said before, the police officers, I think they rolled by maybe once or twice, okay. and they seen us, so we just also got in contact with them, let them know, and also have signs, let them know it's filming in progress. And, so you were able to keep people yeah. back off of the set area and yes. basically keep it as a closed set. Again, very well done. Thank you. And that brings us to our casual crew, Mrs. Pictures. Um, you guys, well, Ryan, the redhead, uh, and James and Aaron uh, submitted a film last year. It was a short, much shorter film, uh, you know, Pretty basic, um, and from that to this, you have now have this you know whole crew of uh, young filmmakers behind you, and uh, there were so many different. You, we were so impressed with how many different techniques you guys used, um, all the different things that you did. Um, were you inspired by the monkeys? Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I know that Ryan wrote the story, but and he's watching too. Okay. Ryan's watching. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, I sent him screenshots. He's like thrilled to see it up there. Yeah. So what what brought this story to life? I think really the inspiration was we were like, wow, the the inevitable, which was the last film. We were like, wow, the inevitable was a really good start. It was just something to do with quarantine. So we were like, man, filmmaking's fun. <laughs> so we, were like, we started to build together the crew and everything, asking people and stuff like that, and we were like. I guess we were just throwing ideas around, like what can we make next? How can we build and be better with better equipment and all that? And I guess some one of us threw around the idea of murder mystery and how can we make that into a big film? 
and now we have this whole story. You see, we left it open at the end, so now we're thinking, hey, let's make a second one. Right. So there's probably going to be a second and a third, which is coming out. And yeah, it's just going to get better. And I love that you, uh, so many of you are you know, in front of the camera and behind the camera. Um, I know that your dad had the sound studio, right, that you guys right used? There. I'm very thankful for that. Yay! <laughs> It was really stuff we already had, like my brother, he's a, he likes to take pictures, he's a photographer, and he had his camera, and then we had Dom who had his camera. So we were like, hey, we have all this equipment, let's put it to good use, so. Yeah. And did, what do you enjoy more, being behind the camera or in front of the camera? It's really fun doing both, honestly, but there's, there's pros and cons to both. Like in front of the camera, I get to be this whole different person, and I get to put on this whole different character, but behind, I get to use my technical brain and like do creative things instead. So it's really got its perks for both. There's a lot of details, the pictures, the bulletin mm -hmm. board, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Did you all collaborate on that, or was one person in charge of Yeah, we all really just came together and was like, like the board. Like the, uh, the the evidence board, we were like, all right, so let's put this here so that this connects to here, stuff like that. Now I think I think we observed that on one of the tables in one of those shots, there was a South Bay with a Nihilus. Your film was accepted for next year. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the new people from the three we previously had, we have Dom, who's new, we have Sal, and we also have Maria and Eliana. Welcome. Just, uh, I think it is, you know, going back and forth, you know, from in front of the camera and behind the camera, to so have, uh, you guys seem to have a level of trust that when you are on the other side, that you, that the person who's filming you, you trust that they know what they're doing and vice versa. And that's really important um, you know, when you're doing both, when you're doing everything. So um, you know, I'm just very proud of you guys. I am. <laughs> Where's Ryan right now? He's Ohio. Ohio, <laughs> yes. College. He wishes he could be here. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> you said that. Uh, it's, are you guys like Edgar Wright fans? Because it really feels like it's got some Edgar Wright like flair in there. Uh, is, is, was any part of this inspired by any of this film? I mean, there's certain uh, parts where like transition to the things where mm -hmm. I think about some of the things he's done, like in Baby Driver or Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. I also like some of his visual comedy, so sometimes I try to, it kind of inspires some of that. So it, it definitely has that, that, that taste to it, absolutely. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you.